But enough about me. I have some even more amazing news to share with you today. I'm excited to announce that today, Ziva, my creators, are now part of the Unity family. I was curious what the technology is and whether it is even close to available on a planet where I live. In a 20 minute Seagraph talk, two reps from Ziva Dynamics said very carefully as little as possible about their products back end. That's the, uh, the, the technology that happens on their server, which we don't see. As a result, the problem that their tool solves it's a little opaque. <laughs> after watching through the talk a couple of times, after downloading their free assets and reading the instructions, but really just also knowing what the limitations are in facial motion capture, I'll attempt to explain what Ziva Dynamics Face Trainer is, what I think it means, and whether I think it's worth it or a tool that I will personally use. Now, what is it? Ziva Dynamics Face Trainer is Unity's, well, now Unity's, entry into a high-end figure creation. Now, obviously, Unreal got a lot of hype with MetaHuman, a free human creator available to all Unreal devs. So people are expecting Unity to try to offer something similar. This is not similar to MetaHuman not at all. This is not a step towards a similar game-ready pre-licensed figure system. There's no similarity. The, <clears throat> the only similarity are that Unity and Unreal are both companies that buy other companies. So Ziva Dynamics does not even give you a working 3D figure. In Unity, this is a head model only with a Maya facial rig for detailed facial animation that you're going to do mostly by hand. Now, what the face trainer is for, or rather who it's for, are mm, large, even medium game studios. I would say not even indie games, really but game studios who are already making high detailed human figures for a large cast or special effects, actor, imposters, but you're still dealing with a 3D figure. So now the quick explanation is Ziva Dynamics bought a lot of 4D head scans. <clears throat> That's basically 3D head scans with animated frames. 4D is time. In reality, it means the same person scanned while making expressions. So you have the actual scans of an actor making expressions to target your blend shape expressions too. Now, Ziva has reversed engineered all these head poses from all these head scans to create a, a super head of reference points, vertices, all based on real life people and how their faces can move. You may already know that MetaHuman was similarly created from head scans of real people, which then you can blend together. But as far as, far as I know, uh, not this kind of expression 4D data. Now the Ziva guys are quick to point out this is not facts-based blend shapes. It's their own thing derived from these topological scans of human faces. <clears throat> Which, okay, I mean, it's, it's still based on, on a human head, but fine, yeah. It's completely different. Now what customers do is they wrap the Ziva head mesh onto their character sculpt or their actor scan and they upload the wrapped head mesh to Ziva Dynamics Face Trainer, which analyzes the mesh using the super head's movement data. So it simultaneously makes the head do all these expressions while it's checking for errors and making corrections. So this is some of the secret sauce. So I have to interpret 
from some of the comments made during the Q&A session at the end of the talk and also reading between the lines a little bit between what they present. <clears throat> Supposedly, the face trainer is analyzing for things like eyeball collision and teeth collision and vertus overlapping. So the results are much more granular and detailed than your typical blend shapes, certainly more than the copy paste facts blend shapes that we get in Character Creator, what you're seeing here. So that is the problem that they have set out to solve, how to get very fine or granular expression data onto a figure pipeline without doing the 4D scans to capture each expression for each actor. So that cost is obviously prohibitive. That's like in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to scan a whole cast that way and then process their faces. This, this you're just wrapping a single head scan. Um, a similar service, not really in the same ballpark, but kind of a similar process is Polywink, who will turn around industry standard blend shapes on a reasonably low poly head in a couple of days on any head mesh. And they have two plans. I think it's 300 euros. You get an iPhone uh, compatible model for 500 Euro euros. You get an extended set of blend shapes and vizimes. Now in comparison, Ziva Dynamics solution is expensive. Each head is going to cost you $1,800 what you get are not blend shapes. After analysis, the wrapped head mesh has a configuration file that tweaks the vertices through a proprietary player. Now, if you're like me around this point in the presentation, ah, uh, yeah, this is all starting to sound like tech off you speak for blend shapes, <laughs> a technology that exists and has been standard in 3D exchange formats like FBX for like a decade at least. Fuck you, OBJ, <laughs> but you know, everyone else has blend shapes. Now, before blend shapes were officially a thing, Virtus morphing existed in proprietary formats unique to each render engine. That's why we still have different names like morphs and shape keys. But the format that has become the standard, like on FBX figures and game engines, is called blend shapes. So when you hear that term, it's pretty specific to just the, you know, the industry format of blend shapes. It's, it's still basically morphing. But blend shapes is a common data format with an established compression rules. And I think it was Maya, Maya's version of morphing. So they won the format war. They got to name it what they called it, which was blend shapes. Now, Ziva Dynamics is saying not, they, they're saying it's not blend shapes and it's not facts based. Um, in fact, they're really not saying what their technology is. <laughs> I assume it's vertus morphing or blend shapes by another name, possibly another compression scheme, just a lot more of them. Now in the talk, they show a head running an animation in Unity. The mesh renderer has no blend shapes on it, uh, but it has a couple of extra Ziva Dynamics components to hold the configuration file and the Ziva player, presumably. Now, with the head, you get a Maya facial rig. This rig is probably a clue to what can be animated and approximately how far. If it's not morphs, it might be lots of small bones. I doubt that fits with their Virtus analysis back end, though. Now, Ziva Dynamics has a couple of free files if you want to download and check it out. There's a head model for wrapping with a lot of vertices. Just looks like a subdivided head base mesh. Nothing special, really. Um, 
I'm not going to be doing this as any sort of tutorial. I was curious, but to be honest, I'm not that curious. <laughs> I'm sharing my research with you. Do what you want. No one's stopping you. I'm not buying Maya to use a Unity plugin. I'm sorry, Unity. This, this product is not for me. Um... But it's for someone. Look, this is all fine. Unity is free to spend their money on what they see as the needs for their customers, who are not me. I have not paid for Unity since it went free. I'm not their customer. I, I drop a, a grand each year in the asset store. I'm, I'm nobody. Who cares? I'm low end. So who, who does want this? Well, over the weekend... Embarrassed to say, I got bored and I watched a seven hour playthrough of The Quarry. It's a console game. Um, it's kind of like a playable movie with a few choices, like every 20 minutes, you get to make a one choice. <laughs> if you've heard of Until Dawn, it's the same game. Same story, exactly the same characters, same location. It's the same game. <laughs> All right, so it's character heavy, a lot of cutscenes. At least when I watch a playthrough on YouTube, it's like all cutscenes. I was obviously keeping my eye on the facial animation. Some were fine, some were horrible. <laughs> and the women, the actresses, seem to be better at it, but the men, Guys, what the fuck? Is your face paralyzed? Like, move your face. It's bad enough that the whole thing is kind of this banal teen dialogue, but then the men's faces, like, rarely moved. Their voices rarely moved. Like, uh, 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 uh. Like, that's all they did. Uh, uh. Men are terrible actors. Oh, my God. All right. It's off the topic. I assume they didn't use an iPhone for face capture. But, but you know, I'm looking at those heads, trying to see exactly what's moving. <laughs> you know. Um, and also, like sometimes, like the 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 figure would blink in with her normal skin, and then scars and blood would like blink in on top of her because you know she'd been through a bloodbath and gotten beaten up, and it's just. Anyway, it's interesting to watch these things. So the female characters were generally pretty good with their facial acting. And I was thinking, like, okay. Like, I can do this. I can do this animation level. Like, being inspired. And not intimidated, you know. I mean, it was obviously a professional job. I didn't like the story and the dialogue was err. But, you know, it was also like this natural acting. Some scenes felt improvised, and but in a good way. Like, I know I just said that the dialogue is terrible. It's fine. I'm not a hater. But I think that there was a lot of dialogue and I think it was probably all captured, facial captured, on the voice actors, based on how uneven those facial performances were, they had to come from the actual actors' faces. <laughs> but, but like that allowed them to be more conversational. Like this is good science. This is all the technology being like adopted, whatever. Meanwhile, okay, all right, all right, 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 right. So, but the real story is: Do you like how I save all my stories for the end? So the real story is um, unrelated to the stupid teenagers in the wood plot. There's this completely unrelated to the plot swamp lady who interrupts a game and she talks at you and she chooses scenery because I don't know why, because the story is boring and nothing happens in it. And anyway, this is like a trope inside video games there's this like narrator or psychology character or a prophetess or just some spooky person that breaks the fourth wall and starts talking to you directly i don't know why games are written this way <laughs> but but anyway this swamp lady her animation was fantastic like wow like, wow. Like, honestly, like, I tuned out her whole monologue. Like, probably you stopped listening to me a long time ago. And I was just watching her face. 
all the detailed movements in the mouth and she, and she was and she was like a, an older woman with a lot of lines and creases and lots of stink face and it was just amazing to see. Okay, I see a clear relation between this like swamp hag lady from the quarry and the weird enemy lady from Unity's latest demo. Um, partly because they're both like word salad, like what the fuck are you even saying to me lady? But also like this is obviously some higher quality than, you know, higher quality facial motion capture than just like an iPhone. <laughs> it's impressive animation. It didn't make the quarry better, it, but it did showcase this higher end figure kind of out of context with all the rest of the figures. In fact, it made the other figures, the other faces look worse. <laughs> whatever. I'm not a critique. I'm not a game cri critic or whatever. I look at these only to see what I should be doing. But anyway, the swamp lady, I would love to have that quality, sure. I'm not going to work that hard. I'm not going to go back over all my mocap. Not for YouTube anyway, obviously. Um, yeah, so, but it did make me think. Like, it did make me think, like, what level of detail is acceptable? Because, like I said, even the even the lower end female actresses, all of their facial motion capture look pretty good, expressive. Like that was you could story tell with that. The men, <laughs> you know. So also, but like, how 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 do you get this exceptional level? How much more time would that take to do? Uh, this kind of detailed... Where do we even start? Maya, I guess, is where I start, so... Where's the machine learning? <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't I just be able to use this on my iPhone and it, like, gets smarter and... <laughs> Alright, the one thing that I did learn... If you do in a game... Don't pay the men to do facial motion capture. You'll get nothing. <laughs> you have no tad. It's a waste of money. <laughs> All right. That's my... That's my... What is this even? My cutscene artist news. I'm Wet Circuit. I will. I will cutscene artist you later. Bye.